All right. So we're here talking about how to adapt API priority and fairness for KCP. And during the last community meeting, I think we discussed you know, most of the issues. I think it you know it needs to have some recognition of the workspace concept. We need to have a concurrency limit per workspace. Uh, to my mind, the biggest question was, you know, what sets the concurrency limit per workspace? Well, who's who decides? How's that conveyed? Um, and then, as someone who's new to the project, I just need wouldn't mind, and we might need to record this part. Just some understanding of how to, you know, do development. Uh, how, you know, uh, features that exist in both base Kubernetes and KCP. You know, how they're both being developed concurrently with forked code bases and you know, coping with that kind of good stuff. So let, let's start with the more interesting part um, about how to set the concurrency limits for a workspace. So the yes. simplest thing would be just a constant, maybe a command line flag. Uh, would that be adequate? Maybe um, let's talk about, I mean, long term, of course, we want something which is controlled by the KCP admins, billing is involved in all this stuff. I would move that aside for the moment. I would just try to... We come up with some numerical specification of what we want to to swapple or to the seats. I think use the number of seats, something like that. Right, right. Yes. And put that. Put it on some workspaces. Try to translate it in the background to PNF in some way. That's the task, right? And basically, try to prove that PNF can bring us what we need, just with two workspaces. One super noisy, limited, throttled down, and the other one has paid. So the the other one wants to get their their quota in seat terms, whatever, right. and they are not disturbed by this no, noisy neighbor. Something right. like that. Right. I believe there's an integration test like that uh, already, and we can mm -hmm. certainly transpose it into uh, KCP workspaces. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, right, so seats is is the term, right? So a seat is just you know one ordinary request executing at a time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the you know the idea is yes, we want to set a seat limit or you know per workspace. Uh, so I think I heard you say um, first, let's just start with an experiment to demonstrate that it can do that isolation. Um, mm -hmm. So that could be done uh, indeed with a simple command line parameter or even a constant mm -hmm. in the code that um, it has has some number. Mm -hmm. um, and that immediately brings me back to my other question. Um, you know, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an existing feature. Um, and, and in the upstream, I hear there's, you know, this idea of the uh, cluster uh, field is in the request parameters is being removed or has been removed. I forget which. Oh yeah, this is a detail. Um, it's not harmful. But it's what? Um, it's not harmful. Like the cluster name has been been renamed, so we use that as a vehicle to put the cluster name, the workspace name, into the system. But we will replace that just with an annotation. So it's just okay. detail how it's being presented. Does not matter. Okay. All right. Well, okay, uh, yeah, I think maybe we don't really need to to record me learning how to work in this environment. Yeah. So maybe if we're agreed on maybe. the goal, we'll, we can just stop the recording here. Just yeah, we can do it in a second. Um, just one clarification, maybe. I would like to. I mean, one part of this proof that the technology helps with what we want to do is the term absolute. Like, there's a maximum capacity value, maybe a flag, something like that. Now I have two workspaces, like the, the capacity is 1000. I give one workspace 100, the next one 200. And they can get their share, that's all fine. And now I had, I had, I know, some more, so the 1000 is exhausted. Like all workspaces as a sum get the 1000. What I mean is that this value, which is on a workspace has basically meaning which is an absolute meaning without knowing how many other neighbors there are on the server. Right. That's what a seed oh. is. Yes. Okay. If it is, is that perfect? Just as a goal, something in this direction must be part of the goal definition. Right. Right. Now, 
you may be thinking of the way APF is configured today. The concurrency pools are configured with these relative shares. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's the other side of it. So there's really two sides of it, right? There's there's capacity coming from the server, and then there's allocation and division uh, coming from the configuration objects. So the capacity of the server right now, in you know, upstream regular Kubernetes, comes from command line flags that just provide a fixed capacity. And so I think what we're saying, you know, is that we want a Kubernetes, I'm sorry, a KCP workspace to be analogous, right, to ordinary Kubernetes API server. So there's a fixed absolute capacity that comes from the server side. In this case, it'll be coming from the workspace. Yeah, which gives a guarantee to the user, like the user will get those 100. Yes. Without, I mean, the neighbors don't matter for the user. The user doesn't see them. Right. You can get 3,000 or 200, whatever. You can get more than 100, mm -hmm. but 100 are guaranteed. This is basically... No, no. The, the meaning is it's, it, it is this user, this workspace, you know, or this upstream, it's this API server, or in KCP, it would be this workspace, has 100 seats available. It, they, they, the workload can't take 200 seats. Oh, the, okay. The, it, it has 100 seats available, period, end of story. Yeah. yeah. Is there no way to have a burst of some kind that I can get more if it's free? Like CPU is the same thing. If well, CPU is know, free, then you can get some. It's much like CPU, right? When you're running on a given machine, the machine has a given capacity. The workload, the, the sharing amongst the workload is dynamic and squishy. The machine has a fixed capacity. Yes. But I think there's no upper bound for what, how many shares I get. If everything else is idle, I get all 24 CPUs, something like that. So there's an upper bound. There's 24 CPUs. If you have a burst of load, you don't get 36 CPUs. You still only have of 24. Of course, yeah, yeah, sure. But you can get them if nobody else consumes them. That's what I meant. Right. So again, the concept here, the upstream concept is a, an API server is configured with an absolute number of seats. The server will allow that number of seats to be occupied and no more, under no circumstances more. Okay, I see. I see. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. it, actually, we've got a little bit of fuzziness, but you know, just it's just kind of breakage due to, to small things. There's, it's not like there's any significant uh, deviation. Mm -hmm. So there is. Uh, yeah, it's it's a capacity. There, again, there's two sides of it, right? So there's the sharing amongst the parts of the workload, okay, where we do currently have also a division into independent concurrency pools that is configured by shares, and we are working right now on <laughs> adding borrowing between the concurrency pools, and we've also talked about configuring the concurrency pools in, abs in terms of absolute numbers rather than relative shares, but that's all about dividing the fixed capacity of the server amongst parts of the I workload. See. So I would get my 100, but inside of my workspace, I could use those shares and just distribute them. Like my controllers get 60%. Exactly. So a workspace becomes analogous to a Kube API yeah. server. It has a fixed capacity, and then it has concurrency pools that divide up that capacity. Yeah, yeah. As a... As a proof that this works, basically the goal is maybe in, let's say in four months. If we have implemented that, I want aggressively throttle the users. Like, like in cloud API, it's pretty low QPS. It's not QPS, it's a different concept, but same idea. And we have to protect the system to survive. Like. The system controllers have to get their share, whatever happens, and every user should basically get their promised share. So we can make a test at the end, like 100 users, everybody does as much as he can, like using, using clients, storm, produces a storm onto the KCP instance, and system should survive, like system controllers, and every user gets their share, something like that. That's basically it. Mm -hmm. Then we have proof. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing you wrote earlier, earlier is really getting to the essence of it. If we have two workspaces, one of which is loaded heavily, you know, and, and the clients are offering, say, we give each workspace 100 seats. 
but clients have you know 300 threads that are trying to occupy a seat all at once one one workspace has 300 clients the other workspace has 50 clients the one with the 50 should get its 50 right and the one with the 300 should only get the 100 at a time yeah yeah exactly that's great i think we are on the same page this is it's a good good definition i think we have to write it down not now but afterwards asynchronously and so um before we go into the second part um we need a problem definition that's fine we have to write some i mean the problem definition is more or less already the demo script like what we expect what we show in a virtual demo it's not coded afterwards but we use a style to to give our goals for for prototypes so for june basically in this case so we have to get to that point we can do that asynchronously at the end there should be an epic in jira next week where the steps are written down like the user user visible steps so the user stories basically for the demo and any technical action items we have to do so something must like that must be the output but we can think asynchronously that's that's all fine the goal i think we have now that's perfect okay i'm not familiar with these demos but again we don't need to record me learning about them so I show you. Ask, ask. Yeah. Asynchronously, that's all fine. Okay. All right. So if you want to stop, that's good. Okay.